Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades. I am Matt Connerton. And with me, as always, of course, the Honorable Gary S. Hopper. Matt! Yes? I haven't seen you since this morning. I know. It's been hours. It's been hours. Unbelievable. I I, it's been even longer since I've seen you than I've seen these guys. I know. What's yeah. going on with that? I don't know. Yeah, Matt Matt came <laughs> Matt came over uh, Sir Matt of Connerton came over the house uh, with uh, Ross Terrio and Mel Gibson and George Lambert and we uh little Mel and we um we took Matt out shooting for his first time ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, ever. My first time ever. firing a gun ever. Ever. It was fun. It was fun. Do you remember what you shot, Mr. Oh, Mr. Matt? God, no. I, sh I shot an AR-15 at one point, right? Pistol. Yeah. Right. Uh, Did you shoot the AR-15 pistol? Did I? I don't know. I shot the, uh, what's the, the Che Guevara gun there that uh Oh, Ross that's AK-47. AK-47. I shot that. Yeah, he calls it the Che, che gun. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the names of anything else. Okay. I've shot a lot of different guns. See, I started them off with the 22, right? Okay, you guys love this, right? So I started them off with the 22, and when I'm teaching somebody to shoot, there's really only one gun rule. Point it in a safe direction. It's always loaded. If you do that, you're good. Anyway, that's not really... <laughs> that's one rule. Well, it's a one, rule with like an addendum attached. It's a dendenum. Okay, so dendenum. It's, <laughs> it's like denim only without the m den. So, um, so we went through the rule, safety rules, and then I, I start them off. I try to start people off with twenty twos, because then they get over the they you know cause people who haven't shot before think that this is going to be this crazy loud bang and recoil and sounds scary. Yeah, yeah scary I was, stuff. I was scared. I know. So I started started off with the twenty two uh, Ruger the Ruger single six right the little uh, revolver sounds yes Blink. okay yeah okay no you're right yeah yeah and then we moved up to the Ruger ten twenty two so we could try a rifle I think you like that tended to like that the best because you actually that's hit nice I actually hit something you actually hit one, something yeah. <laughs> it's, it's nice yeah, yeah. 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 it is a nice little gun <laughs> do you know what you hit or you just doesn't matter. He hit something. Neighbor's house, I think. Yeah. So <laughs> heard something thump. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I heard glass breaking. So okay, so this is what this this is <laughs> this is when I became a jerk by accident. I like I like it when I'm a wicked jerk, but it's by accident, so I don't feel as guilty. Because uh, I had two yellow boxes. One was 357, and one was 38 specials. And I meant to graduate them up to 38 specials because, as far as recoil goes. That's really kind of be, of what I had. That was the next in the sequence. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I let you shoot the three thirty eight special. I thought, but it was three fifty seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He wasn't ready for that one. No, no, no. <laughs> that barked a lot more. But I shot thirty. He did end up shooting thirty eight three fifty seven magnum. Uh, he shot the ten millimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, did you shoot the nine millimeter? I don't remember. I think so. Okay, um, so that was it for handguns, I think. And then you shot um, the Mini 14, which is a 223. Mm -hmm. How'd you like that? I don't remember. That's the one with the scope, the crosshairs. Oh, yeah. Recoil shouldn't have been bad at all. Yeah, no, I did like that, yeah, yeah. And, okay. and then you shot uh, Ross's AK-47. The recoil yeah. on that shouldn't have been bad, but it's hard... It, the sights on it are harder to see. Yeah, I can't see. I, I want to buy one, but I can't see the sights anymore. I really can't. I'd have to get a scope and all that crap too. Um, then you shot the eight millimeter Mauser that Ross brought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Which you know I don't <laughs> is is shoot hits about as hard as a thirty odd six. And then um, the twelve gauge. You did shoot that, right? Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, yep. shot the twelve gauge. That. So, yep. so you had a. Uh, you pretty much felt as much recoil as you need to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you have fun? I did. I did. It was fun. It was definitely fun. So you get over that threshold of, you know, it's like the first time you jump out of an airplane or something. I don't know. Yikes. No, it's not that bad. No. Really. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but but you, had, you had a good time. We had yeah. a good time. Yeah, Except absolutely. nobody brought me coffee. Yeah. It was really weird. You got to pay their dues. I know, right? See, I didn't What's see the Facebook that? message until later. Yeah, sure. And so, it should be a standard <laughs> practice, shouldn't it? You think they bring something. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not the one. Who, who was it who actually stopped? It was uh, Mel and uh, George. Mel and George. They, actually they showed up with Kenora. iced coffee. <laughs> and right? didn't get you one. And they didn't get me one. I think they wow. did it intentionally to mock you. I think so. Because George is waiting for your endorsement. <laughs> so until you, yeah. until you officially endorse him, like, like, like uh, John kind of thought about maybe possibly doing, um, well, he he's going to mock you with he coffee. Ha- I, well, he hasn't <laughs> bought jo- uh, John any coffee. Oh, right. So, mm-hmm. there you okay, go. I see how it all works. Yeah. 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 It's not, yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Slow yeah. Gary bought me a coffee, and I think I'm going to, maybe I'll endorse him for governor. See? Nice. You are you got to run now. You uh, I have to run. You got John Heichel's yeah, endorsement. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so that should be enough. That should be. Well, yeah. now you can't endorse George because you have to endorse yourself. Well, I don't I don't know. Anybody would, I don't have a lot of regard for anybody who would vote for me, so. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> endorsements are okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gus, I've forgotten your last name because I'm um, Irish. Breton. Brenton. Breton or Bre- Brenton? No, Breton. Like Breton, Breton Woods with one T. Breton Woods with one T. I don't know how to spell it anyway, so it doesn't matter how many T's you add in there. <laughs> Unless it's Breton and, and <laughs> something like that, you know, otherwise. And, and the uh, always honorable and... Very frequent guest. Yes, yes. Representative John Heigl. I think he hey, holds oh, the so Does this count? This doesn't count like this afternoon doesn't count for... No, no, that's a different show. Well, but you hold the record for both shows, I think. I have no affiliation. I may hold the record other than host of shows. Yes. Pretty much. I think you so, could. Yeah. You very well could. Yeah. Hey, so last week I told you we went down your... Because we were going to talk about the Constitution this week. Mm. And, and uh, so I stopped by your uh, Uptown Auto... And I got a stack of about 15, I think, uh, constitutions, mm-hmm. and I, I handed them out in front of the the, the studio. Yes. Um, there was like this huge crowd waiting for me to come down and hand them out because I announced it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, autographed or just no, no, no. All the paparazzi that were there. But there's what there was. Yeah, yeah. There was this one lady says, "I said, would you like a, a, a copy of the Constitution?" She goes, "Yeah." And then she opened up and saw your your business card in it. Mm. Says, oh, I know what this is all about. I get this figured out. She thought it was just a. Thought you were running. Run, she thought me. I was yeah. John Heichel. Wow. And she said, "Take a hike, Heichel." No, she didn't say that. I know, but well, it would have been, been cool. It would have been cool. Hey, that's Ray Buckley. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Yeah. Don't, don't plagiarize uh, the Raymond. His, his Raymond, uh, yeah, his right. brilliant campaign slogan. Right. <laughs> so anyway, we, we're. we're one of the things, because um, we're, we're going to talk about tonight, or the main thing we want to talk about is the Constitution, but I was going to let this kind of be your show, because this is the thing that's really bothering you, is how little in the state house and the federal government they even pay attention to the Constitution. It's like last week we had uh, Karen Testerman on. We are talking about can a... Um, because uh, her... her Opponent when she gets into the, the general election is right. is uh, um, Jean Shaheen, and she, Jean Shaheen voted to support the Small Arms Treaty with the UN. Mm-hmm. And the question was, can a treaty supersede your constitutional rights? Karen believes it can. And she she actually uh, posted she gave she sent it in a private message the the where it says that in the Constitution I forgot to hmm. repost it in the uh, in, on uh, hmm. rock paper hand grenades hmm. uh, Dan Itza believes it can't so wh- where 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 are you guys on that but that but but that that kind of gives you an idea how important the Constitution how old is, the is. but it, let me let me let me finish. Mm-hmm. It's important what the Constitution says, but does the, the other aspect of that, and the other aspect of that is, let's presume that the Constitution trumps the treaty, which I think it should. <clears throat> if it doesn't, in fact, it absolutely should. Mm-hmm. Our United States government is so uh, constantly stepping on our constitutional rights with almost oblivious to them or they don't care about them, I'm not sure it would matter. They'll vote in a treaty and say, oh, we're just supporting the treaty. Well, that's unconstitutional. Yeah, prove it. Well, then, the, then they will arrest you. Well, yes, they will, and, and they're, they're extremely overreaching. Uh, but they do it all the time. They do it all the time. You know, article, article 6 yep. 
uh, second paragraph. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof. So the laws have to be made in pursuance of the Constitution. And all treaties made, or which shall be made, under the authority of the United States. The United States doesn't have, well, continue, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. So not only is the, is the Constitution and any laws made in pursuance thereof, the, the treaties that are made have to be also be within the authority of the United States to make. And the Second Amendment trumps everything. So how, how do they propose that this treaty is going to have any effect on anybody? Right. Well, the thing is, that if it's they not vote, being made in pursuance, you know, within the authority, the scope of their authority. My my point is though that even if that's true, mm -hmm. and it and, and you just read it, so it's true, they'll just ignore it. They do yeah. all the time. Absolutely. I mean, you look at what the NSA is doing, and the IRS is doing. It's constantly sure, yeah, but tapping your emails and phone calls and absolutely. But anyway, so let's let's go let's let's start where you wanted to go with, with this, John. After my ranting, how did you want to proceed? <clears throat> it's Article Six in the U.S. Constitution. For those of you that would like to read it, right? right. Um, how would I like to proceed? Well, you know, we have uh, we have. You look like you're playing cards, John, because the way you're sitting. I, well, I, I kind of am, and I got the winning hand. Oh, ah, 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 right. yeah, I like right. that. Right. Yeah, I like that's that. very good, very good. Right. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you are officially good on television. Officially, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> officially. We label you good on television. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'd like to go with this. Well, you know, the first thought we had was to do some kind of a show and educate the people on the Constitution. And most people, when they think of the Constitution, think of the Constitution of the United States. Okay? Right. Most people think of that. Most people in New Hampshire or their home state don't think of their state Constitution. Mm -hmm. Because yep. most people don't know that they have one. Correct. I, mean, I, would do, I would agree with that. If they do, great. Most people don't. Most people think Constitution, this is it. Right. I've seen politicians, you know, when they're campaigning, they pull it out of their pocket. I support this. Um, but maybe he'll never read it or have a looked at it. I mean, everybody uses it. It's kind of like sure. a, they all hide behind it's a prop. it. They, it's a prop. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, But then there's some of us that believe that this is much more than a prop. It is... Um, that it is the supreme law of the land, and 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 the United States Constitution, the United States of America, um, or the New Hampshire Constitution. The New Hampshire Constitution is what governs um, the the, the uh, state of New Hampshire. Yeah, it's a restriction on the state government. Right. So when all else fails and everything else is happening outside, and the government shuts down for a day, New Hampshire. Um, still has its constitution intact. And the U.S. Constitution was actually drafted after the New Hampshire Constitution. And a lot of the That's ideas of it was actually the New Hampshire Constitution was the first one. No kidding. And the really U.S. Like Constitution was, was, 18, was 1790, uh, 1792 or 89 or 90. No, 17. Yeah, I think it, was, it was after 90, 1791. It was in, 90, in 89 and it was ratified in 91. That's right. Yeah, it ratified in 91. And, and the New Hampshire Constitution was 1784, so five years before. Wow. So a lot of the people that wrote that and contributed to that and contributed to the U.S. Yeah, I was actually, uh, I think I posted on Facebook as a, a copy of the the letter um, from the New ha from New Hampshire um, agreeing, they were the state that agreed to the Constitution and made it legit because you needed so many of the states to agree to the Constitution. But they sent it with an addendum saying, we agree to this, it's, you know, we're, we're, you know, ma making this the law of the land, but we want you to consider this. And part of that was the Second Amendment, and, and that was the genesis or part of the genesis of the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. 
was the uh, was that letter from the state of New Hampshire. I've heard the Bill of Rights, you know, uh, which ended up being only ten um, to the U.S. Constitution, ten amendments. I heard there was originally over 120. Wow! That, that really? they they slowly took apart one after the other, and uh, these ten were the ones that. The states were absolutely not willing. So I'd like to see what the other 110 were. <laughs> that would be interesting, yeah. Because, you know, why not? Yeah, yeah, that would be That'd very be interesting. interesting, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, they, there must have been quite a bit of value there, uh, considering who wrote them, mm -hmm. the, you know, the founders. Yeah. So we had this idea, you know, let's, uh, you know, you're looking for things to discuss on the show, and we're looking for places to talk about this book that has been with us for 250 years, and and this is the New Hampshire one, for instance, is the second one. We have one that dates back to 1776 that was around. Um, so each time the new corporation is formed, they um, write a new constitution, like you, any corporate document would be. Can you clarify that? I mean, I've heard, I've heard you talk about that before, but when you use that word corporation in this context, can you... Because some people are going to hear that and say, well, what does he mean, corporation? Uh, the state of New Hampshire is a corporation, mm -hmm. uh, as is the United States, as is um, everything else, because we deal in corporate contract law yeah. throughout. And um, when, when these corporations are formed, I mean, we have a corporate seal. We have uh, New Hampshire corporate seal. Um, we've got two corporate seals. Well, we have a corporate seal, and we have a, another seal that was called an organic seal um, on on a lot of our documents in the state house. We have it at the uh, on the um, in the front of the uh, uh, representatives hall where mm -hmm. the uh, speaker is. Uh, there's two different seals there. I don't know how many people have ever noticed that they're different. Yeah. There's two there, yeah. and one is the organic one of the. Uh, fish and the arrows and uh, pine, pine trees. trees. Yeah. yeah, that was a big industry back then. This is of the people. That's seventeen. We had a constitution in seventeen seventy six, which which was which came out January fifth, seventy six, and that's the uh, seal okay. that they had. And that's pretty wild to read that one. That's pretty wild. But then when the new constant when the new corporation was formed in seventeen eighty four, the new constitution was written. Okay. To go along with that new corporation, and I've always wondered. I mean, were um, were things that were attached to the previous corporation um, part of the new corporate deal, or mm -hmm. did the new corporation um, say, like, when you buy a corp when one corporation buys another, you can go, well, we're not taking any of your liabilities before this one's formed. Yeah. So it's absolutely a corporation. It's a it's a public corporate. I mean, it's a, all corporations are public, yeah. and all corporations are granted um, from this uh, from this main one, which is the state of New Hampshire. Okay. And the federal the federal uh, United States, like things are of the United States, the United States, the military, the the armed forces of the United States. I don't know they say of of America, but the uh, it's the corporation. It's that it's that. Uh, 10 square mile designation uh, on the Potomac in Washington, D.C., actually. Okay. You, you can go to Dun and Bradstreet, and you can do a search for any town in, in any state. You can do a search for the police department, the courts of that state, and you will find a, a separate Dun and Bradstreet number on oh. each one of them. No kidding. Yeah, they're all listed Very as corporations. Yeah. And, uh, and they act as, you know, they're municipal corporations. Yeah. Yeah. And you've heard every town is incorporated. They're all proudly incorporated yeah. right. whenever they were incorporated. Okay. Yeah. So it's all corporate. It's yeah. all it's all contract law. Okay. Not that I'm a you know, I'm not, I'm not an attorney. Yeah. Or okay, so anyway. So anyway, what do we want to talk about? We thought we'd bring the corp the we thought we'd bring the uh, different constitutions to the to the forefront and explain to the people out there. So let them know that they exist and where to find them if they're looking for them and that we have one for New Hampshire and the United States of America as well. Oh, uh, on, what, what, do you know what the general court website's called? It's, it's, it, the New Hampshire uh, uh, legislature or the Senate and everything else is called the New Hampshire General Court. Right. I don't know what the actual web address, but if you, if you Google search New Hampshire General Court, 
you will come up with a website. And on the front page of that website, down on the left-hand side, it will say other links of interest, I think. You click on that, and that will have – you can, from there, get a copy or, or read – the New Hampshire and or the federal constitution. I think mm -hmm. the federal. I know the New Hampshire one because I go refer to it a lot. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so that, that's one place they can go to get it. Or they can go stop by Uptown Auto and get a copy. Of the U.S. Constitution. Of the U.S. Constitution. New Hampshire one's on hand right now. Or you can go to the Secretary of State's office at the State the House. Secretary of State. And they have New Hampshire constitutions. Yep. When, uh, when they print them. But they should always. At the, at the website, uh, www.nhredress.info. There's a uh, there's the 1776 Constitution and the 1784 Constitution. The earliest copy we have available of, of the uh, 1784 is from a book that was preserved, uh, which was printed in 1789, which is very important because in 1792 there was the Act of 1792, uh, which made it, it changed a lot of things in the New Hampshire Constitution to make it conform to the U.S. Constitution, oh, okay. which had just been ratified. And if you go to the Secretary of State Archives, talk to Justin or, or, or Ben over there, the, the guys who work there, or, or Brian, um, the archivist, you got, they give you great information, and, and they love to help, and, and they'll pull up old documents you can look up. You can hold old parchments and read wow. redress petitions, for instance. The, the, yeah, they're very, very knowledgeable. How different are those constitutions, the, 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 the two New Hampshire ones? The 1776 is actually, uh, it, from what I can tell, it looks like a big parchment. Yeah? And that was it. Just oh, one, okay. one parchment, mm -hmm. and it's in about three pages, the way they scanned it. Okay. <clears throat> I've never put them back together to see what they look like. Handwritten. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. handwritten, but it was... If you, if when you read it, it looks very much like the Declaration of Independence. Okay. And what I think is, I think the the thirteen colonies uh, all, probably all did something similar, and it was a it was actually a letter from the House of Representatives to the uh, governor and his council, saying, "You guys have left town. You've left us with no government. What do you think you're doing?" Right. Yeah. And and it was a it was a list of grievances. It was actually huh. it was actually written in the same manner as a redress petition to the governor. Because it was at that time the governor and the council that uh, first saw redress petitions and then would pass them down to the House. There was no Senate uh, during the, you know, the, the province times. Okay. Now, that was that province time, is that that's, uh, during the time the king was in charge? Yeah, the provincial government was in effect until 1776, when the uh, first, until January 5th, when the, the House uh, took. You know, they took it upon themselves to put a petition for redress in to the governor and his council. I think it was Wentworth, right? Governor Wentworth, he left. And they were... He skipped town. They were, they, yeah. they were writing wow. to, to the king saying, we have no government, we have yeah. nothing. Yeah. This guy skipped out, he's heading back to England, or wherever. I think he went back to England. Yeah. And, um, get out while the getting's good. Oh, yeah. He, mm. had, he got out early because he was in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Governor Wentworth. Mm. Hmm. Um, so you know, we could start. I mean, there's, there's. Why, why don't we start with the New Hampshire Constitution? Start with Article One, and we can cross-reference to see where that is in the federal Constitution, and work our way through it. Sure. Article One. Uh, That's the New Hampshire one you got. The New Hampshire Constitution, Article One, Part First, Bill of Rights. Uh, equity of men, origin and object of government. All men are born equally free and independent. Therefore, all government of right originates from the people. It is founded in consent and instituted for the general good. June 2nd, 1784. So what I was told, and if, you know, somebody that really knows this stuff is uh, Secretary of State Bill Gardner. Yeah. I mean, he really, this is what, he, he loves this part of it. He told me that this was moved to number one because they felt that this number one was actually so important. I think he had well, it's told kind me of the, it's kind of it's stating from the beginning what the where the power comes from and everything else. So it's kind of it is kind of the first. It should be the first because it's giving you an idea. Okay, we you know basically are establishing government and the power comes from the people. That's right. 
Okay, so you have to you have to establish where the power for this document comes from. Right. And and I so can't the power does come from the people. Right. And that's a major. That's a real important issue that we have to get get across to everyone that the people have the power of right. their government. Um, <clears throat> I was also told by him that this was number t 12 or it wasn't one of the first Bill of Rights, but they thought it was so important that they actually had moved it back to number one. Okay. It wasn't there originally. Well, you think, uh, think about where that came from. You went from the provincial governor and the king had absolute authority to a document that says, no, you no know, government can really effectively govern the people unless it's the people that are the ones who determine its, its, uh, its makeup, it, who is in it, and everything else. It has to be made up or, or established by the people themselves. It can't be by one person or there, there is fundamentally corruption right from the get-go. No more dictator. No, no kings or dictators. Right. No, right. So, uh, and it's and it's founded in the consent of the people. You know, uh, one thing I've never heard anybody talk about is is what happens when the people withdraw their consent. We don't we we don't consent to that part or that part or that part. You know, Common Core. Um, yeah. Or, or any other, you know, the, the treaty that you, you were talking about, the Small Arms Treaty. We don't consent. We withdraw our consent for, for you to take care of that. How are they supposed to do that, that withdrawal of consent? Is that through a, an Article 32 petition or an Article 31 redress petition? Uh, there, ha there has to be a, uh, a mechanism because you can't, if you're going to have a government, you can't have individuals not consenting to a myriad of different things. Let's let's say somebody who's you know um, so adamant about um, the environment mm -hmm. that they don't believe there should be any roads at all. <laughs> they don't want to pay taxes on the roads. They don't want to pay taxes. They do, they think they think it's it, it's immoral. Let's say yeah. to put pavement down. And so can they themselves say, well, I don't consent to this, so therefore, A, I'm not using the roads anymore, and B, you can't, you can't make me pay for them. Well, Article 3, I believe, Society, Natural Rights, two. number 4, sorry. Among the natural rights, some are in their very nature unalienable because no equivalent can be given or received for them. Of this kind are the rights of conscience. So if you have if, if it's against your conscience to support those roads, you know, and then the question is, how do we get those roads? Because you know, commerce, we need to get around, we need to uh, fix the roads that are there, and so you have to look at different systems that are in operation elsewhere for clues. In Chile, for instance, uh, if they want a new road, they put it out to public contractors and uh, private contractors, and they bid on the roads. The, they put up a toll system for a, a, an exact period of time, and once uh, that period of time goes by, the, the tolls have to come out, and that company either made its money back or didn't. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's different ways of handling these things. Mm -hmm. But you can see my, my, my point is that if you had, you know, 100 different p groups in the state Yep. <laughs> disagreeing with, you know, a hundred different policies. And they could simply say that it's against their conscience just because they don't want to pay. Right, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it doesn't have, yeah, It's exactly. not beyond me to do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if, if it's not something, you know, but uh, it, it, it has to be resolved and it has to be really a, a conscience issue. Um, but I can see how you could use that, like you said, for a redress where you had enough people mm -hmm. telling the government no, we don't want to pay for President Obama to go to Martha's Vineyard. If he can't afford to go, like the rest of us, absolutely, he doesn't go. Yep. You know, that, that would be, a, to me, a legitimate petition to the government, that the President of the United States is not allowed to go on vacation unless he can afford to do it himself. It certainly shouldn't be on our tax dollars. Right. I mean, that's more like a king than it is a, uh, uh, a president who's elected or representing the people. No. But they, you know, those are those are kind of 
personal issues at that level. Yeah, it's, it's a little, you know, a little petty, but it's still, I bet you get enough signatures. Oh, you probably, <laughs> you probably yeah. would. But it, you know, how does it affect the? Uh, what's what's the legitimate purpose of government in the first place? You know, we we all have a, a life, and our life involves having children, and some of us, and, and then uh, you're going to work, you're going to be productive. If you're going to be productive, you're going to acquire property of some sort, whether it be real property or or other property. So you have the right to your life, to your children's lives, to take care of them the way you see fit, to acquire property, to protect that property. So my right to my life, which is all these things, and to protect that, which I've worked for and acquired, is is first and foremost i mean if i don't have that then why bother right and collectively we all have that same right to to have a life and to protect it so when we collectively get together to secure our rights that's what we form government for there is no other legitimate purpose to government i can't i can't you know tell john to take your money and give it to somebody else i don't have authority to do that and so if i don't have authority to to do that how can i delegate that authority to the government to take somebody else's money and give it to a third party. I can't, I don't have that authority. So there's a lot of issues that, that certainly need to be addressed. Yeah, it's, it's, gotten to the, it's gotten to the point where the government is so far afield from where what it was intended to be. It was, was it uh, uh, President Madison, I think it was? Um, there was like a, fl wasn't there a flood down south? I forget where. And, and they, they came to the Congress and says, we need you to help us. You need to get tax money. Oh, I remember well, something like that. We need tax money to help after this hurricane mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And he said, I, I have no issue with people collecting money mm -hmm. to support you because it's a very good cause, but that's not what the government was formed to do. Mm -hmm. So you're on your own. I mean, it, if you want to collect, you know, talk to the people in the northern states and see if they can collect money and help that's you right. out and... We're pretty charitable people, so I'm sure we can work something out, but that's not the role of federal government. Yeah. So sure. I think he would have been present, so he probably would have had to veto whatever uh, intention that they had at the time. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it's true. I mean, if you had a government that was limited to, to what it was supposed to be, you it's have pretty a very cheap. very small government. Right. It's very cheap. There's the, you know, our government, is, it says right at the beginning of the uh, U.S. Constitution, that you know, it's for the for the general welfare and defense of, of the nation. There's nothing in there about go attacking, you know, or, or uh, preemptive, you know, preemptive uh, attacks. <laughs> right, you know, preemptive the, war. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the limitations of that constitution are, are crystal clear. Yeah. Chile, um, and I, Frank Zabel is down in Chile, so I've been checking. <laughs> That's right. So I've been looking at Chile, <laughs> studying some of the stuff they do down there. But they they um, they've passed a resolution that they will not support or do business with anybody uh, that's uh, that's at war with another country. Interesting. Not not do business. Um, foreign aid and that, you know, those yeah. kinds of things. The things that we do for other people. They won't provide arms. They won't provide medical treatment. They won't do anything. Wow. You, you want to go to war? It's a big mistake. You shouldn't do it and we're not supporting it. Huh. So, that's, that's pretty cool. Well, yeah. They're staying out of everybody else's business. Right, right. Which is what we not should be doing. Yeah. yeah. Switzerland do that too, doesn't it? Switzerland has a pretty unique way of looking at everything. <laughs> yeah, really, you know, yeah. You know, everybody turns eighteen and gets sent to boot camp. You're going to learn how to protect yourself, protect the country. Uh, I think the first six months they're out of boot camp, they have to carry their weapon with them everywhere they go. Twenty-four the seven, everywhere. That. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's the, why know. they make the the uh, the, uh, the styrog so light. There you go. I'm joking. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they certainly have some different outlooks. Yeah. yeah. You know what's so, interesting in the U.S. Constitution here under Section 8, for instance, just one of the paragraphs in it, I don't want to go away from New Hampshire, but, you know, to raise and support armies but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for longer than two years. And this is to declare war, grant letters of Mark A., reprisal and make rules concerning captures on land and water to raise and support armies but no appropriation of money to that you shall be longer than two year term than a term of two years uh, to provide and maintain a navy mm -hmm. that's kind of interesting um, 
how the United States Constitution says that they'll have to go back and refund the Army. Or Every Navy. two years. Yep. No. The Navy is... Uh, f the Navy is a funded to maintain, to provide and maintain a Navy. Okay. Hmm. The Navy is... Yeah, at the, at the time... The main... At the time that was written, the Navy... Uh, the, the reason the sun never s set on the British Empire is because they had the greatest Navy in the world. The Navy was it. Hmm. Now it's not... It's still very, very important, but... It is very, very important, but it says to raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for longer than two years. Right. They didn't want a large standing army in the United States. I don't know if that's a standing army in the United States. It sounds like that sounds like they need because they had to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the nation of the Union suppress insurrections and repel, and repel invasions. Right. So but they're talking about militia, then they're talking about army. Right. So they, it, it sounds like, I mean, correct me if I'm, you know, if, if you've seen this, but, you know, when I read that, I say, geez, I wonder if armies are to be funded every two years um, and Navy is to be funded perpetual. Hmm. That's yeah. what it sounds like. That's what it's saying. Yeah, it makes sense. To, um, so every two years, but that, that do they go back and ask for more? Do they ask for armies to be refunded every two I think, years? I think practically they do because every two years, well, every two years they're supposed to get a budget, mm -hmm. which would include a refunding or a continuation of the funding of. I, they haven't had a budget in six well, six I years, think it's right? Been six years now. So yeah. therefore, they're so Gene Shaheen in the Senate of the United States has already violated the Constitution just in that aspect. If they haven't voted to continue con to fund the Army again, they're violating their oath of office. Well, you, know, you bring up the oaths of office. Do you, are you familiar with any example whatsoever of a... I, I took a shower like a week ago, John. I'm, yeah, I think you just... Yeah, you it. take one every, every week whether you need it or not, right? Well, no, not oh. every week. Oh, okay. But, yeah. I, just saying it was. <laughs> oh, I thought you were leaving. Sorry. No, my... Phone battery tied to a tied to a plug. Uh. Huh. Um. <laughs> it's good that you NSA know, can listen in. Um, so so anyway, what was uh, the oaths of office? Is something that John and I have talked about quite a bit. I mean, for two years we've been looking for how do you hold somebody accountable who doesn't honor their oath of office? Jack Kimball had a big rally about six months ago. Yep, I remember it. You know, there's no way that I know of to hold any official whatsoever accountable to their oath of office. First of all, how do you know when they violate it? You know, what are some of the, the examples? And you have an oath of office at the town level, plan, planning board members, uh, zoning board members, selectmen. So how do, how do we know what their scope of authority is specifically, and how do we hold them accountable more importantly? You know, accountability is everything. You can talk well, about the, what they what, can the, and can't the simple, do. The simple way to uh, comment on that is the best way to hold them accountable is they're up for election every two years and you kick them out. That's not an oath of office violation. Well, they when should be if, they, if, they're, if, if they've broken their oath of office and the people know about it, the people, them, the you, people should be educated enough to say, all right, well, they, they, you <laughs> broke your oath of office. I am never voting for you again. Leave. Yeah. Hit the road, Jack. People don't uh, realize. At the next election. Correct. The problem is how many more times you're going to break your oath of office between the time you catch them the first time and the, and the next election. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I'm just saying the ultimate. six years, yeah. yeah. Well, Senator, six years. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying ultimately there's, there's that. Yeah. Okay, but you're right. There should be. Well, Article 38. You know, what is art now? What's Article Thirty Eight? You can't article just keep th saying Article Thirty Eight <laughs> of the. You, of remember, the we're not talking just us. We got uh, viewers. You can say Article Thirty Eight, but that you know, I can say Article Twenty Seven. Ah, uh, Article Twenty Seven. You can say. Is, isn't that a movie? Article Twenty Seven. Precinct Nineteen. Precinct oh, Nineteen. That must be what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. Article 38 of the New Hampshire Constitution. Adam 12. Adam, oh, yeah. Well, Adam 12 is good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good show. Car 54. Go ahead. 
Article 38 <laughs> of the New Hampshire Constitution says that the people have Re the right to Re require. What does it say? Exactly what does it say? Not what I'll tell you, you what. I'll paraphrase it so it makes sense to you when I read it because I'm going to jumble some No, no, no. Say it, say it legit. Paraphrase and that, after? Yeah, paraphrase after. So people, right. we have an incredibly brilliant uh, audience. A lot of Malaysians. A yeah. frequent recurrence to the fundamental principles of the Constitution and a constant adherence to justice, moderation, temperance, industry, frugality, and all the social virtues are indispensably necessary to preserve the blessings of liberty and good government. The people ought, therefore, to have a particular regard to all those principles in the choice of their officers and representatives, and they have a right to require of their lawgivers and magistrates an exact and constant observance of them in the formation and execution of the laws necessary for the good administration of government. Right. So Now you can para paraphrase. Well, the people have a right to require of their lawgivers and magistrates an exact and constant adherence to the fundamental principles of the Constitution in the formation and execution of the laws necessary for the good administration of government. So if we have that right to require, how are we supposed to do that? Where, where do we go to require this? Right. What what vehicle do you have to say, you know, to slap somebody upside the head? We used to have redress. It's still there. It hasn't changed. Uh, I don't know of any other process, especially an oath of office violation. Well, you've done the research. What did they used to do? No idea. I haven't found anything on, on oaths of office violations. Have you had any, any – um, well, they had the uh, – the, 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 uh, I don't think anyone's ever been removed from office – for an oath violation. Well, they had the, the two senators, uh, a senator was a sent president of the Senate, the recall. and the other senator, That's a recall, recall oh, in, in Colorado. In Colorado. Do we that, have that wasn't an oath of office violation. It was, too. They, they voted against the Second Amendment. That wasn't treated as an oath of office violation. People were upset because of their votes, and they went and did a recall election, gave them a chance to run again against new other people, and they lost in the recall election. They were allowed to run again. If they breached yeah. their, their oath of office, they would not be allowed to run again. They'd, they'd be considered uh, okay. low life. That makes sense. Right. As the New Hampshire statute 92 colon 2 says. 92 colon 2. 92 colon 2. Yeah. What does that say? Well, that, well that, now that statute, and that's not constitution, but that statute, corporate uh, um, contract law, that says that if you, um, in order to be an, a representative and vote, you need to sign your oath of office and you need to you need to execute that. Um, and then if you violate said oath of office, you shall be removed, hence forth, which is from now. Ever. Forever. So, I mean, this is clear. So, I mean, you know, if, if you're speeding and you go in 90 and a 60, you get a ticket. And you, you go fast enough, and you get arrested. Um, if you uh, violate your oath of office, you get removed hence with. But is that the only penalty that you should suffer? Should there be a? Yeah, but no. You're saying fine. you're saying nobody's been removed at all. I don't. I I can't find evidence of any representative hmm. or senator ever being removed for violating their oath of office. And if you ask most most um, representatives, they'll say that. Jeez, they, they don't know how to do it. We violate yeah. it all the time. I mean, a lot of bills, a lot of bills are absolutely uh, contrary to the oath that we took to support the constitutions of the United States of America and uh, New Hampshire. A lot of bills are contrary to the fundamental principles of the Constitution, and the people have a right to require that constant and exact adherence to those principles. So, and those fundamental principles it happens are. All the time. Uh, justice, moderation, temperance, industry, frugality, and all the social virtues. Uh, they're indispensably necessary to preserve the blessings of liberty. And good government. So Fru I, frugality is uh, something we're not good at as a country. What, what, what was uh, There was another one in there, too. Was it moderation? Moderation, yeah. <laughs> temperance, temperance uh, justice, yeah. industry, and frugality. And those, yeah. are, those are the social virtues that are listed there. Yeah. But you know, along with those, you know, one of the principles is the right to self-defense. Yeah. Your, your article uh, four, your conscience, your right to conscience. And 
uh, you know, there, there's a lot of principles, there's a lot of social virtues, and there's supposed to be an exact and constant adherence to those. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And the people have the right to require their lawgivers and magistrates an exact and constant ad uh, uh, adherence to that. Yeah, but they but don't they, require it. Well, here's a, here's a good example. Let me ask you this. Maybe they will once they start seeing these programs to tell them that they can, that they have that. Right. They have that, right? They have. That's what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's that's okay to set that standard and, that's and their, hold yeah. folks accountable that to it. That is the yeah. standard. That yeah. is the standard. Sure. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Right. And our legislators are spending a lot of time uh, working on legislation, which I don't believe they have authority to pass. Whether it's good or bad, mm -hmm. it's totally irrelevant. You know, there's, there's something I just heard about last week regarding um, dogs, uh, some bill to, to, to like, a, you have Veterans Day, Memorial Day. They want to have a uh, dogs that are in service or, or animals that are in service to give them their own holiday for their, for their good service. Yeah. You know, where does the – I'd like to know – not that I don't care. Doesn't matter to me if you have a day that's set aside for that. Right. But I want to know where's the where's the provision in the Constitution that says that you have the right to do anything like that. that that's it's in the Hallmark Constitution. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's actually the Hallmark of legislation, really. Ah, I see what yes, you did there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but no, it's it's. I know that um, many years ago they had. They they had fast day. They've they've, mm. they've uh, Lincoln set up. I, I think it was Lincoln that did uh, Thanksgiving. Um, it was under Lincoln's administration. Mm. So they've been doing setting up days of remembrance and things like that for a long time. Yes. Yeah. Where is that specifically? I don't know, but it's it's as far as precedent, it's been there for a long. It's been there for a long time, and I'm not necessarily picking on on that. But you just hate dogs. No, I They're love veterans dogs. and service dogs, veteran dogs. Did you hear about that that uh, pigeon? Some pigeons that get um, honorable discharge. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we only got ten minutes left. Attention. Cripe. We're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna do this next week anyway. But yeah, I just didn't realize it was going that fast. Yeah. No, there's there's a pigeon in England that um, a couple of them that got like medals of honor and stuff like that mm. during World War Two for. Well, they get they get shot and everything else, and they still made purple it back. Heart? I I don't know. I don't That's know. I don't know if they pinning it on probably oh, kill them anyway. So <laughs> that would be ironic. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was there, there was These are British pigeons. Yes, or, yeah, well. carrier pigeons. Yeah, I just thought that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's Britain. I mean, they can. You know. So anyway, so we we start off with, for for this week. We started off with the premise that, and and that's federal and state that. They exist. They exist. They're corporations, and their only purpose is to provide for the mutual safety and security of everybody. To have a reason. In other words, if you don't enter into a state of society, then there are no rules, and we basically go back to the feudal lords and the uh, and even further back where you had roving, marauding gangs basically uh, running countries. You had you know this clan and this clan and this clan and they just you know killed each other forever mm -hmm. okay so that's that's why you you enter into a form of government the mutual security is we're going to agree to a set of rules this is and so that we can all live in uh, reasonable security in that you know that if like for instance monetarily if you buy a loaf of bread that that's what the money's worth and you can mm -hmm. go take that money and buy something else uh, monetary uh, security as far as you know that roving band of um, Vikings isn't going to come in and, and uh, kill your kill your chickens and eat them and and do weird things to your family members um, not to say I don't that's not I'm not like anti-viking by the way right I don't want to say you know I'm not like a but anti they like chickens yeah, it's just their chicken. They or, they make their lifestyle choice. And, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not. I'm not saying. So I'm not, they're not right. hurting anybody. I'm not like you know, Vikavobic or something. Right. I just right, don't want right. to get that impression. But, but you're generalizing that all Vikings kill chickens, and that is absolutely not true. No, it right. isn't not true. No, it's not. No. no. I mean, most of them probably do. Everyone that I've known. I mean, most stereotypes are true. Every Viking you've ever met. <laughs> yes. <killed> yes. <laughs> killed chickens and and did things that are on. But anyway. So the establishment of government is for that purpose, is to so that people can live in a society that has uh, 
certain ethical and moral guidelines to go by so that everybody can exist in that environment and thrive in that environment and like you pointed out one of the primary purposes was that so that if you um, built a house you could own that house you could own your property and you didn't have to fortify it with you know walls of concrete and stuff like that for, for the invading hordes of Vi Vi did I go with a Viking thing? I'm sorry for my Viking audience. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. The, the Vikings in Malaysia that watch us are going yeah, to be upset with they, you. They're going to be wicked We're upset. going to get we letters. Just, yes, again. Mm -hmm. But but that's it. You know what I mean? You weren't. You didn't have to build a you know outer perimeter and a moat. I mean, I got a moat. You yeah. saw the moat. Yeah, well, I had to cross it. It was, yeah, very, uh, it was a good thing I brought my swim trunks. Exactly. So, But you didn't have to build the moat, Okay. You had, a, a, if you owned a property, that was, you were secure in the ownership of that property. And that, that is absolutely fundamental to this country because if you can't own property, there is no point in getting up and going to work. Are you talking about real estate or property? Or are you talking Both. about the land that... I'm talking, fun, uh, um, I'm using real estate as a, uh, a, a tangible um, example. Okay? But... Without without forming a government, without having a government that guarantees a certain amount of uh, um, harmony in society, you can't own property because somebody can just come and take it from you. They can just shoot you, shoot your wife, shoot the dog. Well, they probably wouldn't shoot the dog. You have, other, you have other property. What about your time? Yeah. I know. I'm not. I, I know, but I'm just using that as yeah. a tangible thing. But and it was uh, was it John Lock? Who was uh, John Lock? Lock, right? Lock. Mm -hmm. You know, that basically said if you can't own that property, you people aren't going to work. Okay? I mean, if, if, if I have a, uh, if I, if, if you have a teenage kid and they work weekends for months in a row to buy a bicycle and they buy a 10 speed and the neighborhood kid can just come over and punch them in the face and take it. They're not going to work weekends to buy a bicycle anymore. Not the second time around. No, they're going to say, well, I'll just, I'll just find somebody right. smaller than me and take theirs. Gary, I, I have a friend that's a farmer in upstate New York. I just talked to him, just got off the phone. Uh, he owns a lot of land out in northern New York State that he says there's natural gas underneath his land, and he knows it, and because there's a lot of natural gas in that Pennsylvania, they're drilling. But New, New York State um, does not allow drilling of natural gas on your own property, on your own land. So the, I own a piece of land in central Oregon in the middle of nowhere. Um, they, there's a moratorium, and the state is not issuing any permits to take water out of the, to take water out of the ground. So other than I think I can take, I think I can water an acre. I have a, a large parcel out there, and I can only water because I don't have water rights that come with my land. Hmm. And the state, I have to get a permit to be able to take enough water off my own that personal get, That gets into a different... So do you really own... You know, I, Well, th that gets into a different... Do you own the property, the right to be on it, or do you own the land? Well, no. You, you, you get into a different part of the law, and that's called riparian rights. In other words, a stream goes through my property, okay? Mm. I call it a moat, it's a stream. <laughs> anyway, the stream goes through my property. I have no right to dam that up and stop it just because it goes through my property. There's a riparian right, which means that everybody has common, uh, that, that owns property along that, has the right to the use of that water to a point. So your aquifer under the ground would fall under the same category as riparian rights. You can't, in other words, you can let the water go down past your property. You can use some of it to water your lawn. And you can use it for this or whatever. But, you know, you can't throw, you know, a sewage in it and destroy that, that uh, asset that somebody downstream has. That's a riparian right. So mm -hmm. that, that falls under a different, a different category. And it's still, it's still constitutional for them to restrict your ability to devastate that. Yeah, you don't own the wildlife on your land. You don't own the water no, that you flows never did. through it. No, you never yeah. did, though. But up to eight acres, I know people that do own water in this state because it's less than eight acres. I think you can yeah. own an eight-acre pond or less yeah. than ten acres. But anyway, we're going to pick up where we're, we're, we're Article 2. We're going to be talking about Article 2. Article 2. That's wicked That's your fast. favorite one. Yeah, it goes by quick. It goes by quick. You, it goes quick. I wonder, yeah, who's on next? 
Uh, the progress report. Oh. Yeah. They probably wouldn't want to talk about the Constitution. No, nah, they probably already we can have ask. something lined up. We can <laughs> ask them if we can discuss the Constitution. <laughs> but any, yeah, actually, it would be actually kind of cool because you get a completely different angle on, on how they, they see that. Yeah. Because they, you know, they go on and they, they swear to uphold the Constitution, but they see it different. They see it considerably different. But and anyway, that's amazing. It is amazing, but it's, it's not. It's, it, 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 it's a reality you have to deal with. Hey, we'll see you next week. We're going on to Article Two. This could take another. You might take two and two A. This, yeah, this is two be and two A. There's two Article Two and two A. Oh, 2A. I thought you were talking about roads. We're going back to roads again. No, no. I usually two. take ninety-three. Ninety-three. Yeah. Right. Or three and three. Yeah. We go oh, yeah. three and three A. That's true. We'll see you next week, guys. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.